Hi, welcome to our Black History exhibit. Um, all of the items that are for display today um, are part of my personal collection. Um, when I was in the classroom, I always tried to make sure that I shared my collection um, with my students. Um, and, um, you know, and honestly, um, the collection has been ongoing for several years. Uh, on, on this particular table, you will notice that th there are musical instruments um, and books about music um, on, on this table. Um, also, you will notice some vinyl, um, some albums um, on this table. Um, and so as you preview them, let me just explain what you're looking at. Um, the tall long neck instrument that is next to the mirror um, is called a kora, and it is a harp lute. It is um, from the Maliki people of Western Africa. And the instrument's body is composed of a long hardwood neck that passes through a calabash gourd. Um, it's covered by a leather soundboard, usually deer or some other animal. They'll um, use that to make the soundboard. Um, this, act this coral was actually a gift to my husband when our daughter came back from Gambia. Also, you will notice right below that is mud cloth. And mud cloth is a Malayan um, fabric um, that is handmade from cotton and dyed with fermented mud. It's called mud cloth or a, bo a bogolian uh, is another way that, that the cloth is described. Um, and it actually has become a symbol of Malayan culture. Um, you will notice on the, on the left of the table is um, a drum and it's called a talking drum. And talking drums are um, a little bit different um, because they are not played seated. Um, it's an hourglass shaped drum from West Africa whose pitch can be regulated to mimic the tone and prosody of human speech. It actually can talk um, if it's played by someone who has been trained to play it. It has two drum heads connected by a leather tension cords which allow the player to, to um, change the pitch of the drum so what the drummer does is that the drum is held under the arm and, um, and as the drummer squeezes in and pumps, um, moving the, the cords, um, tightening and loosening the cords and hitting on the top, then it changes um, the sounds that, that's coming out of the drum. And then you will notice on the bottom is a gourd um, covered in cowrie shells. And this is called a shakere, S-H-E-K-E-R-E. -E. And it is also a musical instrument. Um, and it is played very much like a tambourine with two hands. You'll see some people shaking it, but a, but a true shakere player uses both hands, um, you know, to play it. And uh, this was a, um, an item, I think, that I purchased at the Gullah Festival that occurs in Buford every May. Um, and I've had it for a long, long time. So all the items on this table, again, um, tied to music in some way. Um, the, the items on the, on the bottom um, are you know, books by um, some of the black authors that uh, I collect. Um, but I also have included some albums um, and other items that are on the chairs that you are welcome to look at as well. So I hope you enjoy the collection. Hi, so if you are looking at this display, uh, let me just talk a little bit about the items that are on the center table, the round table. These are all children's books um, that are books that are culturally relevant. Um, Dr. Alfred Tatum talked about the gap of um, cultural connectedness um, that our children sometimes suffer from um, because in the classroom, even in online reading, um, there, there's very limited opportunities for them to, to see people who look like them in the text that they're reading. Um, most classroom libraries, um, uh, whether they're digital libraries or um, full out, you know, paper uh, and print libraries 
have a deficit when it comes to um, providing an adequate, diverse representation of, um, of, of culturally relevant texts for our young people. And so um, these are books that um, are near and dear to my heart, books that I've collected, books that I've used. Um, I wanted to highlight just that in like the, what, the book Hair Love um, actually won an Oscar. Uh, it's a wonderful story um, that if you're not familiar with it, um, you know, just speaks to the heart of um, fathers and daughters and, and hair and the uniqueness of our hair. Um, there's another book there, I Am Enough, written by Grace Byer, who played on Empire. Um, and it also just is a very affirming book, um, very much uh, building up who we are. Um, and then there's the LeBron James book as well. And what I've found is that um, while these are children's books, adults benefit from them too. And so um, I encourage you as you're looking at these books, think about what books you have in your library at home. Um, you know, your, your children, um, our children are connected to the latest tech, the latest tech that is released is in the hands of our children. Let's start putting books in the hands of our children because readers make leaders. And it doesn't matter how tech savvy your child may be, their literacy skills can never go um, unnoticed. And the best way to build literacy skills is for you to read to your child, with your child, have books there for them, and go to the library with them while you're looking at this collection of books today, that you will find something that you want to purchase, that you want to add to your personal library or your child's bedroom library. Hi, I'd like to talk about the items on this table. If you notice, this table is covered with a quilt. And quilting is something that is a lost art. Um, you know, that was something that our ancestors did um, as a means of necessity for staying warm, but also um, they were very creative in the fact that they created quilts out of things that most people would have discarded like um, scraps of fabric or um, feed bags. And so this quilt is actually a quilt that was made by Altine Foxworth, my mother-in-law, um, many years ago. And um, I just thought it was the perfect back backdrop for Black history and for this table especially, because on this table are items that um, connect with our history locally. Um, you can see uh, as well some sweet, a sweet grass basket. Um, there's a, a, a broom that is a rush broom. I call it a rush broom, but a grass broom, broom that um, if you follow me on Instagram, I told a story about my grand, Ronnie's grandmother um, making that particular broom and using the grasses from the, from this area to to make the broom and how she had a hard pack swept yard, which is a West African tradition of keeping the yard um, free of grass and keeping it swept because the outdoor space was as much a living space as the indoor space. So that broom was made by Grandma Queenie. Um, you also will notice um, a brown mixing bowl. That was used by um, my mother-in-law, Altine, as well. And then you will notice some um, canned items because people in this area farmed. Um, as African-Americans, we lived off of the land and the land sustained us, um, provided for us all of our needs. And so um, you see some jars of pickles and a jar of pears there. Um, there's another basket towards the back of the table, a smaller basket that a friend of mine brought me when she came back from a mission trip um, in uh, West Africa. And she talked about how those people um, worshiped just so um, without restraint, but not only did they worship without restraint, they gave whatever they had. So um, she said the offering might be a coil of rope or it might be a basket that was just made. Um, you also will notice on that table um, a piece of jewelry, um, some bead, what, what are called beads for life. And um, beads for life were, uh, these are beads that are made by women in Africa. 
Um, nowadays, they're made by uh, women who are HR, HIV positive as a means for supporting themselves and their family. Um, Jane Goodall, who did tons of work with, um, with the gorillas, um, I think her movie was Gorillas in the Mist. Um, she was a great uh, benefactor for Beads for Life. And um, I saw her years ago at a conference in New Mexico and purchased some of these beads. And they're made from just tiny strips of paper that these women laboriously um, work together to make them into necklaces to sell so that they can make, earn a living. Um, the other items on this table, you will see another broom. Um, you also will see um, a bowl that is made out of, um, out of a piece of tree that has carvings on it, um, burnt wood carvings on it. And then you'll see some, some adult literature um, written by African-Americans. And so um, these are just some of the books from my collection that um, are made for us, by us. Um, and, you know, and, and it's my hope that some of them are books that you read before or books that you may be interested in reading after seeing them. But as people of color, um, you know, it's important for us to see ourselves uh, in the text that we that we're reading and to see and our children to see ourselves. Um, that's why I was so excited about our recent Bible study that we had on um, this past week, because it was the app, it was the Black History perspective to the Bible, and that was just so enriching. So if you haven't attended Bible study for this week, um, go online and, and pull it up, um, because I'm sure it will bless you. Hi. So we're gonna continue this journey around um, the objects that are displayed. And on this uh, last table, um, you will notice that uh, there are books. There's a book in the corner um, that is um, one of my favorite artists, um, Jonathan Green. Jonathan Green, if you don't know him, I would ask you to just Google him and get to know him. He's uh, um, uh, an artist that grew up in, um, in the Low Country um, and ha has gained notoriety around the world, um, and his work is his his art is always um, something that that I've been drawn to because it's the colors are very vivid, but but the images are so universal that they could be images of anyone. Um, and so um, I have a coffee table book by him that was a gift for years ago. And then there's a print in the center um, that I purchased of his uh, years ago. Um, there also is a, a little um, woven mat that is from a friend of mine just got back from Rwanda um, in October. And she brought that back for me, um, for us, for me and Ronnie. Um, you will also see um, there is um, a couple of wooden bowls on the table um, that I probably got at, Mo at the Moja Festival years ago. One has a painting inside of two hippos. Another is, uh, is carved so that it's a giraffe dipping its head and drinking in the bowl. And just the, um, the details in that. Um, on the bottom of that table, you will see um, another grouping of books, um, the Barack Obama book, um, the red, the book about um, the Tuskegee Airmen, um, which my father was a Tuskegee Airman, um, and just some other books that will um, hopefully capture your attention. And then there's a print that is on the easel that is also a Jonathan Green print um, that is uh, from the Gullah um, celebration that happens on Hilton Head Island every February, every, the entire month of February. And so, um, you know, these items that have been displayed today hopefully will cause you to smile, to feel a connection um, to a heritage that is rich and that we need to make sure that we protect. We come from a history of storytellers, reading books written by us, for us, helps every generation continue our story and it supports our literacy history. 
So help your children build a literacy legacy, a literacy history, help your children um, know their roots, help them um, become better readers and proud of their heritage by immersing them in the culture that we don't have to just celebrate black history in February, we're black every day. Let's celebrate our history every day. Thanks for viewing this collection. Hope it blessed you. Have a great day.